we're looking at bond angles in an electron domain. Um, we have, you know, if this one we have tetrahedral. We have four bonding um, electrons, right? Four bonding, four bonding pairs, and the bond angle there. We're counting the bond angles, the just the angle between two bonds, right? So from this hydrogen to this carbon to this hydrogen, the angle between there or this carbon, this hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, they're all 109.5 degrees. Now, when I take one of these um, bonding electrons and I replace it with a non-bonding pair, so like a lone pair, these lone pair electrons actually take up more space than the bonding electron pairs. The bonds are kind of localized between these two atoms and a non-bonding electron pair takes up more space. More space kind of compresses these angles down here. So instead of it being 109.5, now it's 107. If I replace another bonding electron domain with a non-bonding electron domain, uh, it compresses this angle even more. So these electrons, basically the, the lone pair electrons, take up so much more space that they start to compress these angles because they're going to repel each other a lot more. So you can kind of see that in this picture over here. The bonding electrons are localized between those two atoms. They don't take up as much space. The non-bonding electrons take up a lot more space. Something similar happens when you're looking at uh, double bonds, so like double bonds you have, or, or triple bonds even, would have more, they have more electrons here, so they have more of a repulsion between this pair. So instead of, you know, this is trigonal planar, instead of all these angles being 120, this is actually a little bit more, and then it compresses this angle over here. So instead of 120, you're about you know, 111. When, we, when I ask you for the bond angles, we're just going to approximate them. So anything in the tetrahedral electron domain is going to have um, electron geometry is going to have uh, 109.5. Anything in trigonal planar will approximate it to be 120. Let's look at our next electron domain geometry, and that's a trigonal bipyramid, bipyramidal. So now, when you have um, one, um, five electron domains, where you have one um, on top, one on the bottom, you have three in the middle. So the three in the middle, that those are your equatorial positions, right? So you have three in the in the, in the middle that around the equator and then one on the top one on the bottom is basically your um, axial position so if you think about what the bond angles are here um, from here to here to here it's actually 90 but then from here let me do a different color um, and uh, along the equatorial um, yep the equatorial axis along the equator that bond angle is 120 but then from the top to the middle to one of the sides, that bond angle is 90. So you have two different bond angles, 90 and 120. So when I start moving from having all uh, bonding electron domains to adding some non-bonding electron domains, the non-bonding ones are going to go along the equatorial position because the bond angles are bigger, so that gives it more space to kind of spread out. So again, the electron, the non-bonding electron domains, these lone pairs, uh, take up a lot of space and they have a lot more repulsion. So they're going to compress these angles a little bit. And the whole goal of this is to get um, the electron domains as far away from each other as possible. So if they can arrange themselves um, so that the lone pairs are in you know, like 120 degrees from something else, then that's better than if it was 90 from everybody. So bottom line, uh, when you start removing these electrons and you're going through this process of going from like five, five bonding to uh, four to three, whatever we have, they're going to come off of the, uh, the equator. So if we have five electron domains, the electron domain geometry is called a trigonal bipyramid. Oops. Trigonal bipyramid. So like there's three things in a row, right? It's so basically you have like three things in um, one, two, three, and then you're gonna have one on the top and one on the bottom. So it's like having a trigonal planar and then a um, uh, like a linear atom kind of like stuck through it. So what do we have? So if we had five bonding domains and zero non-bonding domains, that the electron domain geometry, again, they're all going to be trigonal bipyramid, but when you don't have any non-bonding domains, when you don't have any lone pairs, the molecular geometry is the same as the electron domain geometry, so the molecular geometry here is just going to be a trigonal bipyramid, or bi bipyramidal, that's fine. An example is something like PCL5, we have phosphorus, and then you have one, two, three, four, five, and then you have enough electrons. So when you draw the Lewis structure, you can take a minute and try to make sure that you get the same Lewis structure. There's no lone pairs on the phosphorus, and so you have this one central phosphorus. Phosphorus has one, two, three, four, five electron domains around it. They're all bonding, five bonding, zero non-bonding. You can also have four and one for a total of five, 
and this is something like SF4. SF4, so when you draw this Lewis structure, I have four, um, and then you end up with extra electrons here. All right, and this is called a seesaw. Or a sawhorse, either way. So if you kind of think about this on a playground, right, if you have something that kind of looks like that, right, where you have these lone pairs that you can't see over here, but they're still forcing the electrons to occupy a certain position in space. So this is your central atom. You have one that's, you know, linear. Your bond angles here are still 90 and 120. Over here on the first one, they're also 90 and 120. I'll just put the bond angles over here. 90, 120. These are still 90 and 120. Um, that's a seesaw. You can also have three and two. So if I'm looking at this now, I'm going to remove two from the uh, from the equatorial position. And if I had something like C L F three, or I have three fluorines around me. But I have two um, lone pair, two sets of lone pairs uh, on the chlorine. This guy is called T shape. And then we have one more. Oh, and the bond angles here now change. Now the bond angles, right, I don't have any 120 anymore. They're all 90, basically 90 and 180, but we'll call this guy 90. So we have bond angles there. F, C, L, F, that's a 90. F, C, L, F is also 90. And then the FCLF on this way is 180, but that's just 2 times 20, 2 times 90. The last one, I had 2 and 3. This is um, XEF2, so I have XE in the middle, F, F. And then when I work out all the lone pairs, I have them all around the, the um, XE. So this guy is just linear, and the bond angles now are 180. So just to kind of summarize exactly how, what we did here, we, we took, um, here, we'll just draw it out again. I have my central atom, right? I have one, one on the top, one on the bottom, and then I had one atom here, here, and here. Now the first thing I did when I went from, um, this is, you know, I have five electron domains, they're all bonding, this is a trigonal bipyramid. And then what I'm doing is I'm not moving the bonds at all, I'm just Instead of having an atom here, now I have a lone, lone pair of electrons. Right? So I have lone pair of electrons. So the atoms, these, the rest of these atoms stayed in, in, in place, but now the new shape is called a seesaw. So again, if you flip this over on its side, you can see it's a seesaw. And then the next thing that I did is I'm removing these electrons here and replacing them with another pair. And now this guy is T-shaped. If you were to kind of move that around, right, that's a, that's just a T-shape where I have one atom here, here, and here. Now the bond angles are 90 degrees, and then you have a 180 over here. And then the last thing that we did was got rid of this guy, and now we have three sets of lone pairs on the central atom, and I just have something that's, that's linear. And so that's how we got these three things. So we had a seesaw, a T-shape, linear, and we, and we all started with a trigonal bipyramid. So we're going to do the same thing for um, the octahedral arrangement next.